Hey guys, Patrick here, and today I wanted to film another how to be a good server and make better tips video. Alright, so uh, I wait tables two or three days a week. I do it mainly to supplement my income, uh, but I learn a lot of things from waiting tables that I apply to all other walks of my life, um, in music, in business, and just everything else. So uh, I really enjoy waiting tables now, not so much as a, uh, you know, as what it once started out was, was a desperate need for a job, which has now become kind of a, uh, almost like, getting paid to learn life skills and um, business skills. So let's hop right to it. Um, so a good tip that I want to give you today uh, for being a good waiter is to change your mindset. Uh, don't view yourself as solely being a vehicle for food and beverages. Don't view the experience as solely transactional. Yes, you don't know these people. They're strangers. Yes, they realize they're in a restaurant, or maybe they're even in a corporate restaurant, and they really don't give a flip about you, and to be honest, you don't give a flip about them. So, uh, why even care? Why fake it, right? Well, that's not true, all right? You're still human beings, um, and you can still uh, do things to enhance their experience and make something that would be ordinary a little extraordinary. All right, so when you go up to your table and you're uh, taking care of them, of course, you want all your fundamentals to be set and straight. You want to make sure that the timing of the food is perfect. All of those little tiny things that you're going to get better at depending on when you started waiting tables uh, that will come over time. Uh, a lot of that depends on your work ethic and how much you want things to go correctly, smoothly and what your, you know, in my opinion, what your attitude, what your beliefs are about why you're there and why restaurants and hospitality exists to begin with. So make sure all your fundamentals are right. But once that's done, this is when you need to you're either, you know, be yourself, uh, let your let your personality shine through. But if you're a quiet type person, don't uh, or if you or if you don't if you're not naturally outgoing, um, you know, you can have your own persona per every table. Uh, doesn't mean you're uh, schizophrenic or that you're a sociopath or anything like that. But you can give each table what it needs because every patron is different, every guest has a different personality and is in a different mood. Now, when you go up to your table and you try to give them more, let's say you try to entertain them, you know what I mean? Now you're providing them entertainment value or you crack some jokes, you know what I mean? And you try to make their experience funny, fun, they're going to relax, they're going to open up to you and they're going to trust you. This is going to open the door to so much more. Okay, you know as a waiter, uh, to make better tips, you need to sell more product. So you, when you increase your check average and you increase your sales average, your tips will naturally go up. So that's one way to make your tips go up. And to increase your sales average, what you want is a comfortable and a receptive audience. So you build that desire in your audience. When you talk to your tables, you highlight menu items and you describe why they're so amazing. No matter where you work, chances are you can find two or three items on the menu, uh, hopefully, you know, entree, appetizer, and beverage, or even wine, that you can highlight or talk about in a way that, you know, you demonstrate the value of the product, and you say, you know, I mean, you don't have to say this, but in your mind, you know, for X amount of dollars, they're getting this, and this is probably one of the best things on the menu, therefore, because they're dining with you, you are now giving them the best value, so you can talk enthusiastically about it. It doesn't matter where you work or how much it costs, whether it costs $15 or $75, you know? So you build that desire in your audience. You know, you, you excite them. You describe the menu. You engage the table's minds and their emotions into the product uh, that, your, that your restaurant is serving, okay? Now, whether or not they ever order those items doesn't even matter at that point because now you have communicated with them and you have built the excitement the desire and the enthusiasm. That's what's going to naturally help increase your check average. People are going to be less reluctant to, uh, you know, buy um, high price items and add on items. So they're going to trust you. And that's good. So you're going to sell more. Now, when after you build the excitement, you know, or you demonstrate that you really care and you believe in whatever it is you're selling, you know, if you can provide entertainment, if you can make them laugh, put them at ease, and demonstrate that you really care about them and that you're you're coming at them, uh, you know, like a friend. You know what I'm saying? Like you're you're trying to help them have a good evening. The tips are going to naturally come when you do that. People are going to tip you more because they're going to see that you care, and they're going to see that you tried. A lot of waiters don't try. 
you know, um, and and there's many reasons for that because waiters go up to tables, people are snooty, people act like they don't want to hear you talk, whatever, right? You know, and then you start to feel like, oh, well, they don't even want me to talk. Oh, they don't even want me here. Oh, they don't even want. No, that's not true. A lot of people normally are just kind of like, you know, whatever. I don't really care if you talk to me or not. So you have to meet them halfway or even maybe go a little more than halfway. And it's a law of averages. So if you go up to every table that you possibly can and you demonstrate enthusiasm and desire for the menu and you show concern, genuine concern, friendliness, and a nice sense of humor, and then you make sure that, you know, their experience, their food, all the fundamentals are taken care of, people are going to appreciate that. Now the icing on the cake is when you drop you know uh, their check and then you, you say their name and you know from what I've noticed even with older people uh, saying their first name is good because it shows kinda like kinship and friendship and people like that people respond to that uh, most of the time and that'll help you uh, you know get your check average up as well but what you definitely want to watch out for is making sure that you make the guests feel at ease and at home and like they're not a burden. So whenever they ask you for something, you know, don't don't ever ask people, hey, do you need this? Hey, what do you need? Uh, do you need anything? Don't say that. Say, can I bring you anything right now? How are we doing? You know, um, is there anything else I can bring you? When you change your verbiage and your words, you're just like you're just you're just making their world more comfortable, more relaxed. Uh, you're making them feel like you know like they're like they're number one and that's what you're supposed to do as a waiter or a server because that's the that's what the hospitality industry is all about because people can order a steak anywhere people can buy um, you know an organic salad or whatever at any restaurant pretty much but what they're coming there for is the service because if people feel like they're taken care of they're gonna be very likely to tell others about it and come back all right, well, I hope this video has been helpful to you, and uh, please leave your comments below if you're waiting tables, whether you're doing it by necessity, by choice, or, you know, just to make some extra money. It's all good. Um, so I uh, look forward to hearing from you. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'll be making more of these videos, and take care.